you're not alone. If you need someone to talk to today, please contact Crisis Services Canada by either calling them at 1-833-456-4566 all hours of the day, or you can text them at 45645 at 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember, you're not alone and Crisis Services Canada is here to help. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. I'm your host, Graham Forsyth. Happy to be back here on this Thursday morning for an all-new edition of the show. Of course, Coffee with Graham is brought to you by Fabricland Winkler and Evolve Green. One guest joins me on the show today. He's the general manager of the Altona Bisons in the MJBL. We've been planning on doing this interview for a while. There were things that got into the way, like some technical difficulties, most notably last week when my power went out. But we got him on the show yesterday. That's when we did the interview hours before their game against the Pemna Valley Orioles. It's general manager of the Altona Bisons, Kurt Leckman. And Kurt joins me in today's episode to talk about the team this season. We also dive into last season and we also talk about what makes this organization, the Altona Bisons, have as great as it is. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming in the general manager of the Altona Bisons, Kurt Leckman, on this edition of Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. Joining me now on Coffee with Graham is the man himself, Kurt Leckman, GM of the Altona Bisons and the MJBL. Their team this season so far, 10 and 4, second place in the league, and they go up against the Pemba Valley Orioles in a game tonight on the road. Kurt is joining me uh, hours before the game, about 2.30 right now, or 2.36 on this uh, Wednesday, the day we're doing this recording. Kurt, we're uh, finally going to try to make it work today. Hopefully no technical difficulties, stuff like that. But how, how are you doing today, uh, hours before, uh, I guess, the first pitch? No, I'm doing well. Thanks, Graham. Thanks for having me. Uh, looking forward to the game tonight. It's always fun to play uh, PV. And we know each other well. These guys have played against each other for many years. And, uh, yeah, it's always interesting to see how, how things shape up. We'll uh, run our guys out there and see what happens course coffee with graham presented by fabric land winkler as you can see the information to where to contact them there down below but just uh getting back to baseball here uh you guys you know so far this season you guys have had your really strong moments and some moments that have not been so good just speak about what this 2021 season has been like for the altona bisons from what you've seen out there on the field so far yeah we've got a really young team and the days where we pitch well uh, things things go well for us some days when we, if we don't pitch quite as well uh, we run into some challenges you know we had a bit of a tough one on on Sunday at, at St. James it was a hot dry uh, dusty day with smoke was in the air and and that's that second game just kind of got away from us it was it was tight at the start we had a 3-2 pitch you know 50-50 pitch it could have gone either way didn't get the call uh, the next guy puts a ball in the gap and then a home run so all of a sudden instead of two runs it's it's seven runs and that just kind of sort of took the wind out of the sails a bit. And, and at that point, we were just trying to run out some different guys to, uh, out on the mound. But right now, we're really just focusing on getting ready for the for the playoff tournament. And we're pitching a bunch of different guys, getting guys, keeping guys fresh and getting guys some innings that uh, haven't had a chance to pitch much. So we're just, yeah, focusing on, on playing out the rest of the year and see what happens. Yeah, and you, you speak about that double header that you guys had back on, uh, you know, against the... Uh, St. James A's uh, 4-2 win to start off that day, and then you guys ended up dropping the second game 
15 and 5, but you just speak about the just the ups and downs and the, the situations that these players have been put in so late in the season, getting ready for playoffs. Do you think that moments like this of the struggle could kind of benefit this team going forward? Because as you said, your guys' mind is truly on the playoffs at this point. Yeah, you were just telling guys, you know, put the game behind you, move on to the next one. These will happen. It, it happens in the pros. It happens everywhere. You get a, a clunker every once in a while. So it's just the big thing is trying to keep them mentally sharp so that we're not beating ourselves. We know that that things are going to happen. You're going to get some good breaks, some bad breaks, but uh, just stay in the game and, and, and keep yourself sharp so that you're not beating yourself. And, and that's been our focus is just do what you can, play some good defense and see what happens. Let's uh, get to the team, what you guys have been able to do this year. 87 runs for, which is tied third in the league, and you guys are at 65 runs against, which is second in the league up until this point. Just uh, speaking about the, the strengths of you guys' offense, of course, you guys are in the upper half of the league in runs. Just speak about the, the good things that you've seen from the bats this year. Yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a variety. We've had a couple of really tight games, you know, a 4-2 game the other day, followed up by a 15-5 game. Uh, we had a game the other day, a 2-0 game, followed up by one that was 17-9. So it's it's been a real variety pack. And and the guys, for the most part, you know, we're, we're competitive. We're finding ways to, to win, whether it, it means scoring two runs and, and getting a shutout, or if it means trying to score, you know, a dozen or more. So we're really happy with it. As I said, we got a really young team for a lot of these guys. It's their first crack at junior ball, first crack at facing some really good pitching. And uh, no, it's it's been a, a, a short season, but it's been good to see these guys kind of progress. Speaking about that opportunity of these newer players coming in, of course, like you said about the young guys, do you feel like uh, at this point having the, the type of I guess, uh, workload that they've had to handle this year is going to be huge for their development going forward in this program. Yeah, it, it's just a matter of, of keeping them mentally sharp and positive. It's it, it's a big jump from 18U ball to, to, to junior when you've got some guys facing a 22-year-old pitcher who's, you know, in some cases, uh, we faced Cam Thixon the other day who's, who pitched for Team Canada. And and for these guys to, to come out of 18U ball and, and face a guy like that, it, it can be a bit of a change. I try to have them focus on the positives and not get too too down or, or demoralized if things don't go well and just tell you know what get back out there and keep hacking and, and, and things will happen speak about yeah it's just uh before i move on to the question that's crazy you guys getting to go up against the pitcher that uh pitch for team canada which is pretty wild but yeah. uh going going into just the experienced players that you guys got back from last year's roster this year's just how how much of a step have some of these or, or all of these bets taken into just uh, taking their game to their next level this year yeah, I, th I think it's it's confidence and it, it's comfort. You know, we've got a bunch of guys who've been playing junior ball for probably three years, and uh, this is sort of their first year of real junior eligibility. So, you know, they've had a lot of experience as 18-year guys, and, and now just that little bit of age, that little bit of added physical strength and the confidence to know that they can perform. We've got some guys at the top of our order, you know, Trent Peters, uh, you know, Arlen Peters up to this point, Isaiah Letkin, and they, they, they're confident in what they can do. And they just go out there and, and perform. And, and it really helps the other guys when you, when you see that you've got guys who may not be necessarily that old, but are confident. And the other guys can just really kind of build off of that when you know you've got some, some good quality leaders. Just uh, go to the defense now because this is kind of the strong point of the team. Uh, I think you'd kind of agree with that just with the, the types of stats you guys have been able to put up this year on defense. Just speak about not only the, the team around the pitchers, but the pitching as well this season. Yeah, our pitching has been really good. Uh, we, we missed Jaden Gerbrandt. He broke his leg just before the season started. So you know, he's a big hole that we've had to try to replace. But guys like Connor Corey, uh, Arlen Peters, Ethan Giesbrett have thrown really well for us. And, and we've stressed to our guys that we want our pitchers to only have to get three outs an inning. So let's focus on our defense. Let's make the plays. We don't have to make spectacular plays. We just have to make the routine plays. And if we make the plays that, that are, we are expecting to make, we're going to be fine because our pitchers are going to keep us in the game. And, and for the most part, we're really happy with our defense. You know, and we did have a couple of missed plays the other day, again, on that hot sunny Sunday afternoon. But that's to be expected anytime uh, you play a doubleheader and it's, it's that kind of temperature. 
Um, just speaking about a guy like uh, Connor Corey, just the the good things that you've seen from him this season to, to the type of season he's been able to have so far, putting up some pretty solid stats. Yeah, he battles. You know, he's a, he's a he's a real competitive kid, and and he his biggest uh, competition is against himself. So he's constantly trying to get better. He's constantly trying to outperform. And we've got a bit of a rivalry with with a few of the guys you know, who are constantly comparing their stats and, and battling up against each other. But no, Connor's been been solid. He's been uh, able to locate his off speed stuff, which has really helped. He's got good good sync on his fastball, but his off speed stuff's been good enough to keep guys a little bit off the fastball. You know, if you're just going to throw one speed, guys will catch up to you. But uh, he's really been able to mix in that off speed stuff, which has helped. And then uh, moving into another guy in Peters, just a guy who can not only get it done on the mound, but as well as get it done offensively. Just speak about how important it is to have a player like that that can not only pitch at a high level like he's been able to, but also, you know, get it done in some good ways in the bats as well. Yeah, you know, he came to us this year and his focus was going to be solely on pitching, but he is such a good athlete that, he decided he wanted to hit a little bit on days when he wasn't pitching and, and he's just got a good strong swing. He's, he's puts this good call, solid contact on the ball. So he hasn't hit a lot for us, but the days he has, it's just great to add another solid bat in the lineup and, and on the mound again, you know, he's a real competitor. He wants to win and uh, he wants to beat the opposition. So he, he's out there battling and, both him and Connor, when they're on the mound, I don't go and ask them how they're doing. I know they're going to want to grind out all seven innings, so I just I just leave them out there and and don't even want to want to talk to them. Just let them focus, and they know that seven innings is what they're after. Yeah, that's great on you. Just letting them go out, do their thing. Don't say much, or if not anything at all, and just uh, reap the benefits, reap the awards, of course. Uh, just speaking about the game tonight against Pemina Valley, of course, you guys opened up your season against them and lost in that game 9-6. to six. You guys were able to, you know, um, shut them out in uh, in a game against them uh, after you guys dropped your game against Elmwood. Just going up against them this year in the third meeting of the season, the final meeting of the season against them, just what what are the things you're looking for this team, the Altona Bisons, to go out and do against this Pound of Valley team to get the W? Yeah, we got a, a young guy pitching for us today, Dylan Thiessen, a lefty. We're going to see how he fares. Uh... Again, it's it's at this stage we know we've got second place wrapped up, so we're just sort of playing out the games and and just trying to to see if we can position ourselves with our pitching the way we want for the playoffs and, and see how, how guys can do. You know, the guys are competitive; they want to win every game, but it, they know that uh, we're not going to move up. We're probably not going to move down. So it's just a matter of going out and putting in a good, solid effort. And, and anytime you play some some guys that you're familiar with guys that you've grown up playing against you, you want to be competitive and you want to try and come out with the win so we'll see uh, you know we look for dylan to put the ball over the plate and uh, hopefully we can score some runs for him yeah it should be exciting to see what this uh, young guy can do out there tonight should be pretty exciting for the fans and attendance to tonight's game uh just speaking about the last three games of the season after this you guys got a double header coming up after against the elmwood giants and then you finish your season off against winnipeg south two teams that are top four in the league right now of course elmwood has first place locked up and uh you know winnipeg south is in uh i believe they're they're in the top four this year in terms of placement but just getting that type of competition to end off the season how how do you think that is going to fare for you guys getting ready and amped up for the playoffs playing teams like that yeah, Elmwood's always a good measuring stick. You know, they're, they're the class of the league, and they have been for a number of years. And we're going to see how we shape up against We got a really good first game, lost at 3 nothing, but it was a good uh, competitive ball game. Uh, we'll see how it goes against them. Uh, you know, other than that, I think every team in the league is fairly equal, and anybody can beat anybody on any given day. Uh, we've been fortunate to to win more than we've we've lost. Uh, we're quite happy with, with our record, but uh, we know that anywhere – from Interlake to PV to you know, Carillon, anybody can can beat anybody on any given day. So it's it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. 
should be interesting for sure, and it's going to be exciting to get these types of uh, competitive matchups heading into the playoffs this year in the MJBL. We're going to go to our first commercial break in today's episode. I've been joined by the general manager of the Altona Bisons in the MJBL, Kurt Leckman, on this edition of the show. Stick around. I'll be back with Kurt to talk more so about their season last year and just what the Altona Bisons are all about. You're not going to want to miss it coming up after these commercial breaks. Why go solar? Solar is better than ever. Our revolutionary design and inverter equipment with the latest in solar panel technology for the ultimate in-home and business security. That's right, I said security. Grid security and security of your home are linked. Fortify your future today with a battery backup system. No maintenance, quiet running. Did you know in Manitoba, grid-connected, off-grid, and battery backup systems are 100% right off in the year you purchase for any company or farm? Do you want to back up your internet, keep your tills running, and the lights on? We can install a system that is right for you, with battery backup fully capable of taking on all those essential loads and keeping you running. When you call our experts at Evolve Green, ask about getting your free energy audit today. Call or email today to find out what system works best for you. 1-866-5-EVOLVE or support at evolvegreen.ca. Also, be sure to check out our website at www.evolvegreen.ca. Welcome back to Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. I've been joined by General Manager of the Altona Bisons, Kurt Leckman, on this edition of the show. I've just been talking to Kurt about what the team has been like this season, what the season has been like for Altona this year. Of course, they go up against the Pemina Valley Royals uh, at 7 o'clock tonight at Pemina Valley's field, so it should be an exciting game against two competitive teams. But yeah, we're we're back on the show now to talk about last season more than this mm-hmm. season now you guys finished second place in the league last year you guys finished with a 15 and 6 record 137 runs and 86 runs against so you guys go all the way to the finals as well and unfortunately lose to the elmwood giants but just to have that type of season like you guys did last year just what was it like to see the product that was put on the field last year yeah, it was it was a lot of fun for the guys. You know, a lot of these guys, as I said, they this is probably their third or fourth year of, of junior ball. The first year they I think we went five and nineteen. So to go from a, a five and nineteen team to make it to the finals uh, was a big growth for them, and, and they were really excited. You know, we knew we were going to lose a lot of guys to U.S. colleges if we made it to the finals. So for us, just to get there was a win. And uh, we knew it was going to be a tough battle losing seven guys uh, for that final. But, uh, you know, I give our guys credit. They battled hard. And, and, and even though we were in, in, in tough, they, they didn't give up. They competed. It, you know, we lost a 3 nothing game. We lost the last game on a walk-off. So it was, it was competitive. And I told the guys after the, that final game, you know, I was extremely proud of them. Probably never been more proud of a team of guys who battled and uh, just fought right to the end despite the fact that they knew they were seriously outnumbered. Yeah, definitely unfortunate that you guys weren't able to field your best possible roster last year uh, in the finals. Definitely not that team that, you know, was uh, the the players that were huge uh, and you got the success to making it to the finals. But just for you, like like you spoke about, just nice to see that type of fight in the finals. Just what did that say about the, the type of depth and heart 
and leadership on this team to to take that uh that approach and to just never give up in the finals yeah i think you you hit it right there when you said heart you know that's what i, I told the guys extremely proud of the way they battled yeah, they showed up and, and they they knew that uh, elmwood had their full roster and we didn't but they just they fought every pitch they fought every at bat fought every out and uh, yeah it's just that heart that that character that that shows that it doesn't matter what the game's going to look like they're going to battle hard and, and it's, it's just extremely proud of, of the way they they perform and i think that's that's carried forward into this year is that the guys just know that you know they're out here to perform hard uh, and, and play for for their fans and for themselves and for their families and uh, they go out and battle no matter what the circumstances are just you know we spoke about the bats and the pitching this year on the team you guys mm-hmm. had exceptional bats and exceptional uh defense and pitching as i should say uh this year and uh, last year as well just speak about what how, how the the bats last season were were able to be so successful like you guys were were able to produce yeah you know we actually last year were a little disappointed in our offense we, we felt we should have been able to produce more or generate more and, and the guys just it took them a little while to get get rolling and uh and yet we still were able to manage and, and score a bunch of runs so it was it was a testament to the fact that they they were creative they worked counts they took base on balls if they had to and and um it, guys have to everybody has to realize that there's some really good pitching in this league and, and just because you've had success playing minor ball or wherever you're facing some of the top pitchers in the province and guys who are going to college and and it's, it's tough to be a hitter in this league. And, uh, you know, even a a 300 average is, is a real testament to, to performing well at this level. And we had a bunch of guys who were, who were above that, but just, it's just being creative with your offense, uh, taking walks, taking the hit batter, taking stolen bases and, and capitalizing on your chances. Yeah, for sure. And uh, like you said, so many great pitchers in this league. And it seems like you guys had a lot of good ones last year with those 86 runs against. But let's not talk about the pitchers and more so talk about the infield and outfield you guys had last season to you guys being successful defensively. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, as, as I said earlier, we, we really focus on telling our guys just, just make the routine play. It doesn't have to be a highlight reel, it just has to be field the ball fired across aim for that first baseman's head put it right where he can catch it you know from an outfield standpoint it's just know your routes we get our guys to play a little bit deeper and then charge the ball if they have to and and just really having a a plan and being confident i think once you've had some success out there it makes it easier for guys as well so you know and i think the the unspoken thing and things that a lot of guys uh, or a lot of fans often might not see either is we have a really solid catcher in Isaiah Letkin who calls a great game and and he just does not give up anything in terms of pass balls or and he really limits the stolen base game so that that makes a difference too when when you know that your other opposition probably isn't going to try to run on you and and it just allows your defense to focus on the batter it allows your pitcher to focus on the batter and it's just one of these small things that makes everybody's job just a little bit easier if you have a catcher who can really shut down the run game. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Just all, always great to have a, a great catcher like you guys do have in Isaiah, that's for sure. But uh, just speak about the, the pitching, uh, aside from the infield and defense now, mm-hmm. the, the pitching that you guys had last season. Yeah, you know, we had uh, Jaden Gerbrandt, who unfortunately broke his leg just before the season started. He, he finished strong. He, he threw a game late in the season where he threw 18 strikeouts, pitched eight innings. And uh, you know, he, he's just dominant. He's got movement on all four pitches. Uh, him and Isaiah work extremely well together. Uh, you know, we Connor, as I said, Connor Corey, who's, who was through great. And we had a, a stretch last year where we won, I think it was 11 games in a row, and we threw five or six shutouts. So it's just it was just fun to see these guys and the confidence they have when they get out on the mound and and those are fast games too you know they just really work well with with Isaiah he puts the sign down they all go have confidence to know that whatever he's calling is probably the right pitch to throw so it just makes for a really good quick fast game when when the catcher puts down the sign the pitcher's ready and and here it comes so and it also just helps your your pitchers just to focus on throwing the ball and not worrying about thinking strategy they're just see the sign and let it go and 
it, it worked well for us. You know, we've had some of that continue into this year, and uh, it's always fun to see a really well pitched game. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, like, like you said, having a catcher like that, putting down the signs like that, always makes it easier. And uh, unfortunate about the, the broken leg with your guys' pitcher as well. Just uh, unfortunate to see that. But like you said, an unbelievable yeah. 18 strikeout performance in yeah. eight innings, which is wild. But, uh, you know, you guys lost players due to college who weren't able mm-hmm. to play in the final series. Just uh, speak about the, the college players that you guys were able to produce last season. Yeah, we you know, we had a, a number of guys who played on Team Manitoba, just really solid ball players and, and solid people too, which is really just – it makes it fun to coach when you've got guys who are just good, good solid, all-around – you know, players and people, but uh, we had, you know, Arlen Peters was down in, in Kansas City. Uh, Maddox Matejcik was down in, in Missouri as well. We had uh, Connor Corey, Trent Peters, who were both down in in uh, North Dakota. Uh, Matt Boychuk was out uh, west in in Alberta, and uh, yeah, it's just it, it's great for these guys to get the opportunity to to go and and see how they measure up against uh, some pretty good ball players down in the in the states and. And when they come home, it's it, they bring that competitiveness, that that gamesmanship with them, and and to hear the guys on the bench, they're they're constantly talking ball, they're constantly talking strategy. You got guys who who notice that a runner missed a base, or notice that a coach might be uh, giving his signs away, and 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 it's these little things that really show you that these guys are engaged in the game that uh you know they're looking for for any little thing they can if a pitcher might be tipping pitches they're just they're that focused and that into the game and they're talking on the bench so it's it's really neat to see that that these guys that they care and that they're engaged yeah that's great for sure as that uh, next level of focus if uh you know putting it that way but just uh you guys have built a heck of an organization, an organization that ended up going to the finals last season. Just speak about what makes this Altona Bison's organization so appealing for players to come in and play for you guys. You know, it's it's a couple of things. First off, we've, we've got a great facility here. We, we feel it's probably one of the top ballparks in, in the province, just with the grandstand and the lights and the, and the retirees who take care of it. It's constantly being watered and manicured so it's a great facility and we just try to build a build a program that that's welcoming to to players and and we look for character guys so it's a matter of of constantly being on the lookout for guys who are coming through an 18 year program and seeing if they would be interested in playing here and it's you know it's tough we're we're the small market team we're the you know we're the tampa bay rays of the uh of the mjbl you know we we don't have a huge area to draw from so we have to be creative and and have to really focus on trying to build for the future because uh, we know that if if we don't it'll be hard to sustain this organization yeah and uh seems like it's working out pretty well for you guys this season especially with being in second place and being in a good position to try to make a run for that championship this year but uh you know you end up winning general manager of the year last season in the league i know the last time that we spoke the first time we tried doing this interview you said you think of it more as a uh, team award a staff award just speak about the great staff that you guys got with the altona bisons and to just uh everything to do with the staff yeah we've got a couple of really good young assistant coaches and nick kaler and evan anstead who you know are former players they're, they're young enough that they can connect with these guys and and they yet they got the respect of the players. They're out there throwing as much BP as guys want, and and just to have these guys show up game after game and, and focus on, um, helping these guys become the best ball players they can is is has been huge. And and it takes pressure off myself. You know, I can focus on, you know, what kind of pitching matchups do we want? Where are we at with uh, getting guys into the lineup? And, and I I can just focus on sort of some of the bigger picture stuff and, and know that these guys are looking after the. The, the the day-to-day the, the getting the field ready the getting the guys prepped and, and warmed up and, and things like that speaking about the fans now like you said you guys got a top of class facility in the league uh, you guys are 7-0 and 
at home this year, even though you guys aren't at home for the game today against Town of Valley. But just speak about the the fans and just uh, what what they bring to the table, uh, just for the atmosphere that they create when you guys are able to have fans out there at the games. Yeah, you know, last year in the playoffs, I think we had three to four hundred fans at, at some of our final games. So it's it's a great atmosphere. It was you know, slightly disappointing for our guys the way the schedule came up with being so front loaded with home games where we weren't able to have fans during the pandemic. But you know, our, our fans travel well. There, there's a lot of games where we probably have just as many fans at away games as, as the, the home team does. So we know that we're going to be well supported and, and we're looking forward to you know, the, the last double header weekend here at home with, with Elmwood. We expect a good crowd out and uh, it's always nice to be able to put on a good show for the, for the community. Yeah, I should be excited for sure, especially with the uh, new restrictions put in place by the mm-hmm. province of Manitoba. going to be fun to see uh, a lot more fans out watching uh, sporting events, yeah. especially baseball in this case. But uh, going back to this season now, at the start of the year, what was the feeling like around uh, the the team, this group, and to, you know, you know, you guys trying to go back to the championship like you guys did last year? Yeah, I, I think our guys felt like there was some unfinished business from last year. You know, they were disappointed that we weren't able to compete against Elmwood with our full roster. We felt that it would have been a really good, solid, competitive series had we had all our guys. So they feel like we want to get back there this year. We, we did lose some guys uh, this season. As I said, we had Jaden Gerbrand who broke his leg. We had uh, you know, Joey Moffat who's playing hockey up in Alaska. Uh, Tanner Boyle hurt his shoulder at college and was unable to play. Matt Boychuk was out of province. So we did lose some pretty solid players, but it's allowed some of our, our local young guys to get into the games and gain some experience. So, you know, I always say you, you, you play with whoever shows up and uh, you play each day with uh, what, whatever your roster is. So it's you always mit, sort of lament the guys that you don't have, but we try to focus more so on the guys that we do have and, and make the best out of each game. Yeah, no doubt about it. It seems like those uh, younger guys are stepping up huge this year and giving you guys good production. Uh, in terms of just the same scenario, is it going to be the same scenario as last year where you guys could be losing some players on the roster that are on the roster currently? Yeah, college? we we unfortunately we've already lost Arlen Peters, who's headed down to college down in Kansas. He he pitched uh, for a Sunday and he left yesterday to to head down to school. So, you know, that's a that's a big hole. He, he's a solid pitcher, but we are keeping our fingers crossed and, and a little hopeful that perhaps we might get Jaden back from his from his broken leg. We don't know what he would be able to, to bring in terms of stamina and strength, but I think just if we could see him out there on the mound, it would be a big morale boost for our guys. We are hoping to have a few 18 new guys uh, available for the playoffs. So I, I think we've gonna, you know, we should have some decent pitching, not as good as we wish we could have or not as many guys as we wish we could have but we'll go out and compete as as much as we can with who we have and I think the big challenge for us will be you know can we score some runs Uh, that that'll be the challenge when you when you get to the this level in the playoffs you're going to be facing good pitching and you have to find ways to to generate some offense and and that's that's going to be the key yeah for sure and is it raining where you are right now it is it is raining and we're not going to complain so uh as as i was walking over here i noticed boy we haven't had rain for a month but uh today it is and we'll take it yeah for sure should be uh an interesting ball game with the rain uh have you guys had a chance to play in much rain before or is this has it been pretty rare we haven't had any rain this year for for much of anything but uh you know we at this level we'll be fine it's uh, the fields are dry enough that they're going to soak anything up that comes down. So it'll just be a matter of, of keeping the ball dry, making sure your pitcher's got a, you know, a towel or something out there to, to keep it dry. But we're, we don't expect any issues. Yeah, should uh, not affect the game, like you said. And yeah, we have not gotten much rain this year. And of course, it's uh, it's on game day. But like you said, should not affect the uh, yeah. game too much. It's going to be exciting to see the outcome for every fan in the stands there tonight of who's going to be taking this game tonight it's the altona bisons taking on the pemna valley orioles at pemna valley's home field of course that game goes at 7 p.m and i'm gonna let kurt go now get uh, himself ready in the mindset of uh, getting ready to uh you know get ready for this game kurt it was fun talking to you maybe uh later on in the season or in the off season we'll be able to talk more maybe during the playoffs but uh, good luck to you and the rest of your team uh, heading into playoffs this season. And yeah, um, we'll, we'll talk soon again.
Great. Thanks, Graham. Great chatting with you. Take yeah, care. awesome. Kurt Leckman, general manager of the Altona Bisons, joining the show today. We're going to let him go now, go to our final commercial break here in the show, and I'll be back with some final words on this edition of Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. Stick with me. Welcome back to Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. Kurt Leckman, General Manager of the Altona Bisons, joined me on today's edition of the show. And since not only this clip, but all the other content in today's episode was pre-recorded yesterday, I'm recording this clip last night, I had a chance to look at the MJBL's website to see how Altona fared in their game yesterday against the Pemna Valley Orioles, I guess, by yesterday. I mean today since this clip is being pre-recorded. But anyways, they ended up getting blown out pretty badly. 17 to nothing was the final for Pemna Valley in that game as they take down the second place team in the league in Altona. It's going to be interesting to see how Altona bounces back on the weekend going up against the Elmwood Giants in a doubleheader. Of course, Elmwood being the first place team in this league and yeah it's going to be just interesting to see how Altona bounces back but I know in last Thursday's edition of the show but not last Thursday the last time we did a Thursday episode I said there was going to be score graphics as well as stat graphics and standing graphics from the MJBL on today's episode but unfortunately we weren't able to get those done if you guys want to check out what's happening in the MJBL just search up Manitoba Junior Baseball League and you'll be able to find their website and yeah we hope to have those graphics that I've been talking about for you guys in next week's episode fingers crossed in next Thursday's episode but that's going to do it for me on today's edition of Coffee with Graham I want to thank Kurt Leckman for coming on and being the guest in today's episode I also want to thank you the viewer for tuning in today, as well as our sponsors of Coffee with Graham and Evolve Green and Fabric Land Winkler for sponsoring today's episode. I'll be back on the network on next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time on our Facebook at ASTV Productions, or you can check out that episode on our website at astvproductions.com. But until next week on Tuesday, folks, I've been your host of Coffee with Graham, Graham Forsyth, signing off now. Have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. Stay safe out there and have a wonderful weekend as well. Until next Tuesday, I'll see you then. Peace out.